Greetings YouTube, it's the middle of July, uh, it's been that kind of a few weeks, had a lot of work on, had a house inspection, haven't really done much with a wind turbine, wanted to talk about this stuff today, so I'm going to be doing a bit of a quick comparison between these two frequency generators which are made by the Epic Resonant Light of Canada, now this is the Progen 3, this is their newest machine, Okay, and this is the Progen 2, which I'm not sure how many frequency generators they've made, but this is the older version. This is still a very good machine. Very good. We can see uh, 31st of May 2010 on there, and the firmware is probably 2008. So, so, for the sake of the viewer, if you're wondering which one's best, this one is way better as you'd expect being a much updated version. The only thing I don't like about the new one is the design with the edgy corners. The design of this is much more user friendly and sort of old fashioned. It looks more like a CB radio receiver kind of thing. Let's look at the back of this one. So we've got a trusty RS232 connector. Uh, this can be connected to some software and you can upload, uh, remove, etc. any uh, frequency sets. It's got a minimum and maximum for this and then this four pin connector plugs into the plasma light unit which I'm not using at the moment because it's faulty and I'm sending it off for repair in the next day or so which is why I wanted to make this video because this even though this is working this has to go off to the repairers and this has got a 12 volt socket here so that it can be used without the lamp. Uh, this one uh, on the back Got a USB connector. Sorry, let me adjust the camera. We've got a USB connector on the back, and I have successfully connected it to a PC and downloaded some of the newer frequency sets. That's where it plugs into the plasma lamp there, and it's plugged into the 12 volt DC. So the main difference, the main difference is first main difference is that. You can plug two accessories in to this one see and you've got these these brilliant and very handy uh, adjusters for the power okay so if we put them both on zero on this one you only have one so this one will produce double the power to pads or leds in this case and also the knob on the back is very hard to adjust uh, it's, it's not in a very good place. So that's the first major difference. The second major difference is that as far as I can see, this one will only carry, for want of a better word, 40 frequency sets. This one, uh, it's got a couple of thousand built in and then it's got a thousand spare slots. So that is a major, that is a major downer with this one, even though this one does come with 40 very good uh, usable sets. Uh, it's very handy uh, to have the extra space to put your own ones on and also the endless amount of built-in ones that this has on this, over 2,000, compared to this one, which is 40. Th this one even has all the CAFL frequencies built into it. Uh, so yes, another uh, main difference is the fact that when you're running a frequency set with a Progen 3 that you can skip the levels. I'll show you what I mean. And uh, let me just plug the LED in. Let's quickly show you this. So this is a very simple device that I made, uh, which is a set. There's two strings of LEDs here in series. You can see it goes from the positive there to there to there to there and to the negative. So there's four three watt LEDs. On each side of this they are glued to plas uh, scrap plastic sheets which were the dividers out of a tool case so that's what I used uh, they're 660 nanometer LEDs which reduce this beautiful red color which I believe is beneficial and therapeutic especially uh, for muscles and uh, nerves and stuff like that and you'll see they've got these lenses on and these lenses are very important because what they do they increase the density of the energy that's coming from the LEDs uh, whereas normally the light would spread out at 120 degrees like so 
the light spreads out at 40 degrees, 45 degrees, sorry. Uh, these connectors here, you can see there, one second. What I did was I used the connectors of some old TENS pads that I didn't want to use anymore. You know how they stay sticky for a while and then you chuck them? Well, I chopped these off and just literally tore the metal bits out and then they go on and just connect these two wires that come out of the uh, frequency generator. So let's plug those in. Red one, black one. And now let's get that back a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on set 119, which I use quite a lot, uh, which is an RSI chronic injury jobby. So, ah, <clears throat> another improvement in this one over the older one is that when you run a set, it asks you if you wanna run uh, an additional or no or loop. The loop doesn't come in this one. So say if you wanted to run a set continuously, you just go three and then you'd loop, loop it how many times you wanted to. So I'll turn the volume thingies down to zero for now. Enter, and then also another good thing about the Progen 3 is you get offered this time scale thing. So if you want to run a run it shorter, you can. So we'll just say 350%. So now the set has started and we can see on the display what's going on. Uh, that's the set name, the set number, sorry. Uh, we're on level one of the set, total time remaining. Uh, time remaining for this level, the frequency at this level, the type of frequency, uh, it's a single frequency, it's not a sweep or a sweep increase or anything like that, and it's been pulsed at one hertz. So now, when I turn the volume up each side, we should see something start coming from the LED. There you go. So that's that side. And then hopefully by the wonders of modern science, there you go. So I wanted this thing to use on my forearms mainly, so it can bend like that. And it's got Velcro pads on the back. It's not the finished article yet. You can see I wear it on my forearm like that. And that camera angle shows you the intense light. So that's 20.5 hertz. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip through the frequencies. Uh, skip through the levels now. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So that's 6.3. Hundred and forty eight hertz. Fifteen hertz. Hundred and forty six. Four hundred and forty four. And you can see the remaining time going down as I skip through each level. Normally I wouldn't skip through. Obviously I'd be wearing it and letting it do its thing, but just to show you for the video, we might as well run through a whole muscle RSI chronic injury set. Level 12, level 13, level 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and that's the last one, and then it's obviously set to repeat again. So yeah, that's how it works. So yeah, and now if we want to run it lower, we just turn the, turn it down. So another thing about this is it allows us to visualize the frequency. So if I go to manual, and select a frequency of 0.3 hertz. Play. Okay. 
Right, okay, that at the moment is running a square wave, 50% pulsing off. Now, if we change the wave shape to a sine wave, we should see a totally different kind of thingy. Now that's a sine wave. So we can see the gentle on and off. Whereas if we change it to a triangle, the triangle, you see, we still get that rise and fall. Whereas if we go back to the square wave, it's more of a uh, switch on and off. Also, let's go back to the sine. Oh, let's go back to the sine wave there and now we'll change the offset that's a positive offset that's the center you see we're not getting anything with the center offset and that means we won't get anything with the negative so yeah basically this is very advanced I mean this one which I'm going to plug in next. This has a great reputation as a frequency generator and I must make it clear that I'm only really interested in frequencies from a health stroke alternative health perspective rather than from a uh, you know physics or engineering sort of interest so I should have said that at the start I may well put in a picture saying that. So now let's have a look at this one. And here is the LED device that I made for this one. Let's just get a multimeter in a moment. Uh, I tried this earlier. So if we go three and then put base and then put zero hertz, we can actually measure the voltage coming off the back of the coax malarkey. Okay, please note, let's zoom in a minute. Let's zoom in a minute, and please note it's on maximum. So, red in the center and black on the outside, that's what we're getting, 13.62 from that. Which is good. So let's adjust the it down a third approximately and there 10.7 so again we've got a very good method of varying the amount of power but it's just quite awkward with this one whereas with this one sorry to keep reminding you but we have these really excellent uh, little adjustment knobs here you can see that they use a five pin I think it's called a mini XLR cable. So, let's get the LED on this one. And this is, it's just another sim very simple, the positive from this meets the positive input on the LED string. Sorry, the video camera died then. Yeah, just explaining that the positive from the coax comes to the positive of the LED there, then negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And now it's very simple. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, with, you can see the menu we've got going on here. And if we go to one, it's the most common thing you'd use and put zero, one, which is one of the cancer ones. Start level, one, additional bank, no, beat when done, no. And then you'll see the frequency, single pulse, less information on here, but nice and clear still, very clear. There's some kind of weird stuff gone on there where somebody dropped it in the past. Uh, but as I was saying earlier, you can't skip this now. You can count, you can pause it by pressing star and it's paused and you can resume it, which is very good, but you can't skip through like you could do on the other, on the ProGen 3. Uh, again, it's got the same kind of idea with the, with the uh, volume knob for turning down the power of the pads or as we're using LEDs.
I don't know if you can hear. Can you hear that? Maybe I'm going good. Maybe I'm going mad. But yeah, so apart from the 40 sets, this is still very good. And bear in mind that I would normally be running it with the uh, Pearl, which is the uh, plasma bulb. So yeah, I do like, as I said earlier, I do really like the design of this with the corners. And these still fetch a hefty price tag from what I can see and are pretty rare. Uh, so it's got a program mode if you want to go, if you want to change anything in there. So we just go to select bank 17. Uh, zero one and then what you'll do if you want to keep the information the same you're just going to keep pressing the hash key and it will just keep going through uh, so level two we could change if we wanted uh, we'll go we'll change that to uh, one minute so if we want to change them all to one minute i'll just keep going through like that So this is changing all the levels to one minute from nine minutes. There, and that would have edited that. That's how you program a bank. Uh, and the manual mode is actually pretty good. Oh no, don't do that. Three, manual entry. Manual mode, again, we can use this to visualize the frequencies. We can say 17 hertz. We can say 30, skip it, 33.5 hertz. And yeah, so that's just a video comparing these two frequency controllers, uh, generators, whatever you want to call them. Uh, this one is a lot better. A lot better. ProGen 3. But again, this is a very capable piece of equipment. So if you see one of these at a good price, I would definitely invest in that. And thanks for watching. Sorry if it got a bit boring at the end. Bye for now.